All right, hello everyone. So today I'm going to do a demonstration on an on-car brake lathe. We've done two demonstrations of cutting a drum and cutting a disc with an off-car brake lathe. So the brake rotor comes off the vehicle, goes onto a lathe that's on a fixture on a bench, and then you cut it. This is an on-car brake lathe. So what this is gonna indicate is the brake rotor is going to stay on the vehicle and it's going to be cut to the tolerances of the wheel bearing. The benefits to the on-car brake lathe is, is you're getting a more reliable cut taking into consideration the deflection of the wheel bearing. So all vehicles are mass produced and they're all gonna have a little bit of mismachining tolerance in the wheel bearing and there's gonna be clearance issues as well as play just in between the roller followers or the roller bearings depending on what kind of bearing it is. The on-car brake lathe takes in that consideration into where it cuts the brake rotor to that little deviation so the rotor is not likely to be warped. When you take a rotor and you cut it on an off-car brake lathe, it's cutting it to the spindle of that brake lathe. Now that spindle and the amount of vibration that it has might not match up with that of the wheel bearing that you're going to bolt it back up. So this is a better way of machining the rotor to where you're gonna to have tolerances that match the vehicle. A lot of manufacturers, for warranty purposes, this is how they want their rotors cut. And this way, there's less likely that the customer is gonna have a warped rotor right off the bat or any vibration. Now, that being said, the brake rotor still can be warped by running too large a tires on the vehicle, driving and stopping and firmly dragging the brakes. Any number of operator errors can cause the brake rotors to warp. So this isn't a cure-all for that. If you have a driver, if you have a customer or yourself drive a little bit too aggressively, you're going to have issues with uh, brake getting warped on their own. So we'll go over some of the differences between this lathe and the other, the uh, off-car lathe. So with this lathe. We still have normal cutting head. The difference is, is our lock for the two cutting heads is, is one thimble instead of one for each one. The cutting blades too, to where a normal off-car brake lathe, you have the three cutting points. You also can flip them. So you have six different cutting edges for those cutting teeth. These only have cutting blades on the top area. So you have three different, but you're gonna be doing less cutting passes most of the time. You can cut these rotors with one pass and you don't have to do multiple passes so you're not using the blades up as much. Um, so the measurement that these are going to be going in is similar to that of an on-car brake lathe. You have the lock right here to be able to move the cutting head inwards and outwards, which is similar to turning it in and out with a, with a regular one. Now what comes different with the cutting head is we do have this little guy right here and what this is is this is our auto stop so this little thimble right here is going to be is going to connect to our auto stop so this is going to stop the machining process once it gets to this button so you could potentially be you know if you're not fully paying attention it's not going to retract the head all the way out and drop the head onto the ground now this does have to be mounted to the vehicle so we have a couple different adjustments that we can do with that so the whole fixture itself goes up and down on a set of hydraulic rams. Now there is no lock for these. Once these get set, these uh, hydraulic dampeners pretty much secure it. And you don't have to lock that out. It also has the ability to angle forward and back. And we have the ability with this adjustment to be able to rotate it. Now the advantage to doing that is when we set this guy up, we have to set it up to where you're avoiding the the dust shield for the brake caliper. So the brake caliper is obviously going to be off and you're going to be putting the cutting head where the brake caliper was. So the backing plate for the brake rotor might not be in the same spot on every vehicle. So that's why you might have to rotate this around. The other thing that we have to take into consideration with this is the drive plate flange. The tool comes with a bunch of different adapters for different vehicles and different hubs. We're going to use this universal one. The numbers on it, so the six is indicating six lug, five, five lug, four, four, so on and so forth. And you just need to match that up. Now, when we install this, we don't need to torque this down very tight. You just have to do it to 40 foot pounds. So it doesn't need to be very tight. So because these can fracture very easily. So what we'll do now is we'll mount this up. Okay, so the brake rotor that I'm going to be using is a bit unconventional than a normal vehicle. A benefit to this setup I have there here though is, is we'll be able to get a full view. Normally with it on the vehicle, we have the fender wall and the fender liner and everything. And it makes it difficult for you guys to see on camera. So this is a brake rotor off of a modern Honda Civic. The minimum brake thickness that we need to be at is 826 thousandths of an inch. So if we 
double check and measure it so we know that we're in measuring tolerances. So if we go off that, we are 871 thousandths of an inch. So we're well within spec for cutting this. So it is an acceptable rotor to cut. So there. All right, so again, we're gonna adapt our adapter for a five lug setup. We're gonna put that on and we need to use all of the lug nuts. You can't just do this with two or three. Um, we do need to have all of the lug nuts in place and make sure too, when they're lug centric lug nuts like this, that we're fully engaging the cone in a little hole for them. I can't stress to you enough, you don't impact these on, you just need to tap them on. They're 40 foot pounds is the maximum torque that these guys can go to. So this can be the one part that's a little tricky. There is on the lathe, this handle retracts in threads that goes into the end of this hub. And we also have this dowel pin that's gonna engage into the motor itself. So we have to thread it in first and then thread the rotor to, uh, to that dowel pin into the motor drive. Okay, we just need to snug this up. You don't have to go real tight on it. And we can double check to make sure that the rotor is on correctly by hitting our motor on. So we have our motor on switch right here. We're gonna look and make sure that there's no chattering and everything's good with the rotor cutting. Nothing's wobbling too much. So we're good there. So then our next step is going to be getting the cutting head in the right spot. So. To do this again, we have the ability to slide the head over. We'll lock the, we'll undo the cutting head so we can get this on. To turn the whole head in, we have this drive right here. This is also gonna be our clutch to engage when it's time to cut the rotor itself. So at this point, what I like to do is I like to make sure that we're, you know, somewhat centered and over enough and lock it down just for now. Cause what we're going to do is we're going to, um, adjust our auto stop. So with it centered, I'm going to back it back out where I want the machining process to stop. So we want to make sure we're clear of the rotor. So at this point, our, our cutting teeth are clear of the rotor. So this is where I want this to shut off at. So we'll lock down our auto stop. So what that will do is when it gets to that point, I'll show you guys real quick. And then we're shut off. So that will shut it off when it gets to that retractor point, which is far enough out from where the rotor are being cut. So we'll go back in, throw this into the middle of the rotor. Now, before we start cutting the rotor and getting our, our first pass, we need to make sure the controls are set. Okay, so with the rotor turning, we can hit, we're in the ready mode, so we can hit start. What that's gonna do is that's gonna auto adjust the motor. So you can see the adjust light is on. All right, so the motor is adjusted to the tolerances of our rotor. Um, the lathe is ready to go. Uh, we have the ready to um, cut light on and the optimum on, so we're, we're 
okay to cut with the lathe. So the cutting head, so they're right about the middle of uh, our rotor and we'll wait for a contact hit. Make sure we're not gonna vibrate that way so that's locked down. Okay, so there's our outside one. So we'll get our inside one. And I like to lock that down while we drive it in. All right, so when you get to that inner rust layer, I'm gonna undo the lock for the cutting heads. That way I can um, set how much I wanna cut off. So we're gonna go two notches on both sides. So we go to the right too. And we lock down the cutting head. Our next step is we can put our anti-chatter pads on. Now these are have a special groove in them so that they'll fit on these particular cutting heads. So these aren't the same type that you'd have on a off-car brake lathe. All right, so now we can engage the clutch. And start cutting. That click indicates that the clutch has been applied and you can now hear that the rotor is starting to cut. our rotor cut we can now measure it to make sure we're still within spec so our minimum thickness again was 826 thousandths of an inch and we are at 860 thousandths of an inch so we are well within spec so this rotor uh, would just need to be cleaned up new pads put on it and the caliper retra pistons retracted and this side would be good to go now, one of the things to note when you're doing this on a vehicle, if this is a drive axle, you actually have to have the other side's wheel off and the brake caliper off and the brake rotor just bolted to the hub. The, that way you're, you're putting less strain on the actual uh, brake cutting motor itself. You also can't do really big cuts with this. You don't wanna strain this if, if need be, if you're taking out a groove or anything, you wanna do a couple passes at a time. But the finish on our rotor is really pretty nice. Easy one pass cut, we don't have any issues with it. So all we'd have to do is clean this up and then return it to the customer. Other than that, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to watch and we'll see you in the next one.